In the past, I uh, mentioned to uh, some people that I have the kind of sense of humor that I love being attacked and ridiculed. Um, I don't know what it is, but uh, as I've said before, me and George W. Bush have the same sort of sense of humor. The more people attacked him and vilified him and caricatured him, the more he loved it. That was just the way his character was. And it's interesting because he was a president that received more than his fair share of vilification, but he actually liked it. I don't know what it is in anyone's psychology that makes people enjoy being attacked, but unfortunately, for better or worse, I have that gene as well. So, just out of curiosity, I've uh, followed up on uh, uh, looking at some of the people that have responded uh, to my two videos on antinatalism. And to be fair, to be honest, everybody, this video really isn't about antinatalism. It's more or less about how one can inadvertently um, really kick apart quite an anthill and uh, get attacked by the armies of red ants. Um, I don't wish antinatalists any evil or anything like that. My concern was entirely with uh, people suffering from a dreadful um, condition uh, that even the antinatalists seem to underestimate, which is depression. It's one of the most horrible conditions that a human being can possibly have. Um, I got involved just because of that. Um, but the responses I've gotten are fascinating. And as I said, my sense of humor, which I think some people might find is a little bit impish, uh, has piqued my interest in, uh, in following up a bit more. Um, if you're not interested in this sort of thing, I suppose you might not want to watch this video. Um, but uh, I got a response, I got a video response um, specifically aimed at me by someone who had already blocked me. Uh, that's kind of interesting. Um, and uh, it's um, and people who are deliberately sort of admitting to twisting my words on this um, sort of uh, are pursuing it based upon the fact that they're admittedly twisting my words. In other words, we know you, ha you said that you're not attacking antinatalism, but we believe that you are, so therefore, this is why we think that um, you're bad for attacking antinatalism. It's an interesting sort of situation to be in um, when you're confronted with what looks, at least from out the outside, for all the world like a bunch of true believers. I won't say that this is the case. I won't say that these people are true believers, because at the end of the day, I don't know what motivates anybody else, let alone a bunch of people that I only know through a few videos on YouTube. But um, I mentioned to someone in, my, in the comments of a previous video that um, I noticed that certain religious people, even certain religious groups, are known for becoming extremely defensive and angry when you even question the fundamental tenets of their faith. I remember the famous video about the Scientologist who loses his temper with someone who is simply asking too many questions about his religion. I get the same vibe from these people. Now, in spite of what people may think, and it's telling that this uh, subject has come up in um, conjunction with depression, um, some people are unaware of the fact that your moods can take control of your intellect. That's the horrible thing about depression. Highly intelligent people can have their own intellects hijacked by their depressed state. I make no claims whatsoever to being highly intelligent, but whatever shreds of intelligence that I do have were most certainly hijacked by my depressed state when I was depressed. Uh, couple of decades ago, and I was severely depressed. Um, your intellect um, tends to try to balance itself out with its moods, or vice versa. You try and think, okay, I feel horrible, there must be reasons why I feel horrible. Let me think this through, because my intellect usually gets me through all of life's problems. So um, maybe my intellect is missing the fact that my mood is actually correct here. So you try and reconcile the one or the other. 
I'm not saying that anyone else in the antinatalist camp is doing this, but what I'm saying is it's a very dangerous and potentially lethal type of confirmation bias, whereby you expect the world to look horrible because your moods um, lead to that sort of expectation. No matter what good things happen, you feel like dirt, you feel horrible, beyond horrible. Therefore, in the midst of a party, in the midst of uh, watching a movie in a theater, in the midst of having sex, in the midst of anything that normally people consider a pleasant or ecstatic uh, experience, you feel like hell. Therefore, your intellect says, ah, then there must be something about this, about the world and about all of its alleged pleasures that I'm not getting right. Maybe these pleasures are all illusions and it's all suffering. Now, this is how one's uh, intellect gets, as I say, hijacked by one's moods. Uh, the mood simply won't go away, so the intellect attempts to make uh, philosophical or intellectual sense out of it. It is a truly vicious circle. Um, highly intelligent people, if you ask me, are even more susceptible to this because they trust the powers of their intellect. They've been told all their lives how intelligent they are, correctly, if you ask me, and uh, they have appreciated the fact that they are intelligent. But in spite of all their intelligence, or perhaps because of, or whatever, they still feel absolutely horrible about life. Therefore, the intellect adjusts. Third time I'm going to say this, but that kind of confirmation bias is pretty much the worst there possibly is. Again, I don't claim that any of the antinatalists are falling into this trap, but I can imagine it's one of the worst traps that life has to set for people. Um, as for the uh, hate videos, uh, oh, I shouldn't say this, but please keep them coming. <laughs> Thank you.